Okay, my friends out there, let's finish this part two of this beautiful little landscape we're doing. Um, onto the water. This is the exciting bit, I think. I get very excited when painting reflections. So look, um, all my colours are still the same. My palette is still the same. They're all still wet. This painting is still wet as well. So let's start with painting the reflections up here. I'm going to take um, a number, what have I got? A number eight soft brush. And I have some turpentine. I'm just going to dampen this, dry it on some tissue. So it's just a little bit damp. And I'm going to mix up a nice dark colour for these. Um, let's get some burnt umber. And I'm going to go into some of this black here. Just a little. Now, I'm going to add a little phthalo blue to that. And that will give me a kind of a dark, sort of a dark muddy green. A kind of a dark, blacky, browny kind of a green. I think this should do quite nice for reflections. So I'm going to start up here and just start pulling down like this. All right. Just like this, all the way across. Um, if you feel you want to lighten it, perhaps just a little bit as it comes across. Let's just take a little touch of Naples yellow. And that will make it slightly lighter. So we've got a nice kind of a, a, a light, not a light grey, a kind of medium greeny sort of a grey going on. And let's just go right across like that. I'm leaving a little line just where they meet. Because you will find it almost impossible to get a completely straight line all the way across there, right up to the top. So we'll cut across that with our palette knife with some bright blue or something later on. So I'm just going to pull these down very sort of, uh, very randomly, I suppose, is the word. I'm not going to try and copy it exactly because with the reflections and the water moving, it's not going to be an exact copy of the trees. It's just going to be an impression. So let's just keep going with this all the way across. Pull that colour down. Okay, I'll stop at that. And let's have a look now. See, do we need to darken it in places? Let's take a little black and a little phthalo blue. And just with that little bit on the brush, just a little bit, I'm going to go up towards the top here and there and just pull some of that down. And soften it down very gently with the brush look so we have it slightly darker up at the very top and soften it away down okay that's fine that's absolutely fine just here and there look a little bit across just the top and perhaps a bit there as well so it's time to clean the brush and start doing the water um, I'm going to just forget completely about this side over here with all these leaves and stuff like that. I'm going to forget about those um, almost entirely for now. I just want to concentrate on this section coming right down all the way. So what I'm going to do is I'll take my big brush. I'm going to mix a nice rich blue with this brush. All right. I'm going to take some titanium white and a good bit of phthalo blue. Now you want a little touch of thinners in this as well. Just a little touch, just to soften it a bit more. And I think that's all I need. Um, blue and white. Let's just try this first. Okay, that's good. I'm happy with that. I'm just going to start painting in around the trees, just there. Don't worry about the detail and all the ripples. We'll do all of that very soon. I'm just going to concentrate on filling in all of this area with this nice rich blue okay let's take a bit more as it comes across it, get, it gets much richer and darker doesn't it so a little bit more blue just as it comes across to the right hand side a little bit let's just pop it in there soften it across and you can see i am using quite a thin layer on this i'm not putting loads of paint on i'm going to leave this area for those trees the reflections of those trees so just maybe just go in just a little bit like that look and just leave that area. We'll put in those trees in a moment. As it comes across, it gets lighter, doesn't it? Let's take a bit more white. Now, I'll clean my brush and just go into some white. I think we need a lot more white as it comes across here. You see, just like that. Yeah, that's better. A bit more white on the brush. It almost goes to a white just around where the sun is kind of coming through. 
what that bright spot is. So just take plenty of white on your brush, look. Plenty of titanium white on its own. And let's just soften this like that. Across all the way. And notice when I'm painting water, when you're painting water as well, all this go from left to right at the beginning. Okay, don't be tempted to paint like this or this at an angle. Just flick it left to right like this. And that immediately gives you the impression of the water moving anyway, doesn't it? I go across a little bit into this. There's not too much blue in here, so I'm not too worried about that. A bit more white as we get up towards that light area. And from here on, it's just more or less an orangey autumn color. So let's not worry about that for now. So my next step is I'm going to just clean this brush. I'm going to dip it in some thinners, rub it on some tissue, just to take most of that whitey color off my brush. It's not too bad. It's still there, but it's not too bad. Um, I'm next going to just pull down into my blue with the trees. Okay, I just, my idea in my head is to soften this all the way down, pull them together. Now you can just use a simple fan brush for this or a blender brush or something like that if you like and i want to keep the dark color so i'm just going to move to another brush a clean brush i'm just going to start pulling that dark down into the water soften them together ever so slightly Okay, just with a nice soft brush. You can use a fan brush or a blender brush or whatever you like. I just want to soften the two together where they meet. That's all I want to do. And come over here and let's just give that another little bit over there. And when that's done, I'm going to take my soft brush, very soft makeup brush, just like that. And I'm just going to soften across, just to soften it out just a little. Okay, that's fine. Next, we're moving on to the nice little rippled effect. Um, so let's, yeah, let's just do a little bit of ripple effect on this. I'm going to start by putting some uh, of that brownie color through the blue first. So let's mix up some more of that nice dark brownie color that we mixed earlier. Let's take some phthalo blue and let's take some burnt umber. Now bear in mind, I'm trying to simplify this as easy as I can for you. I don't want to go into far too much detail with this. So I'm kind of just trying to keep it simple, um, if that's possible, I suppose, with a painting like this. I just want to keep it nice and simple. So I'm going to start by just looking at the photograph, and I can see we have some little ripples coming across like this, you see? I'm just giving the brush a little wiggle. And through the dark trees as well. Just like that, okay? Now I might need to switch to a slightly small pointier brush in a moment. But the idea is to sort of merge very gently those trees, that dark colour of those trees into the water. Just a little. Like that, you see? Um, and you can even pull it down like this as well, as you go along. And I'm just going to simply go like this, all the way down. Notice I'm coming down at an angle like this, but I'm also keeping my brush horizontal as I go. You see what I mean? So I'm softening them left to right, but I'm also bringing my brush down at a slight angle, if you understand. Now this is just sort of the rough work for now. I will move to a kind of smaller pointier brush in just a moment, um, but I'm just kind of getting the thicker ones in with this. So you're sort of breaking up that reflection a little bit, and you're kind of bringing them down into the blue ever so slightly if that makes sense. 
Um, I go over here and I just put a couple of nice dark ones in as well over here. So they go from that kind of dark, dark color then into the blue. But first, I'm just going to take a small pointy brush, a little detail brush, a wriggler brush, as they're called. And I'm just going to take some of that dark color and add a little touch of smaller ones just here and there on the left. So just, I suppose you could call this a little bit of detail, um, but it's just really to give an impression of some small ones off in the distance. Sort of going across and out of the painting. And then you can see they kind of come down like that. I'm simply giving my brush um, just a few tiny little sort of wheels. But I'm, I'm kind of coming, I'm focusing everything I'm doing down on this angle like this. All right, does that make sense? I'm bringing them all down into this corner. So they will now disappear and go into that kind of dark bluey color of those ripples that we have. Uh, you know, just I, I'm trying to keep this simple. I'm just trying to have a bit of fun, I suppose, as I'm going. Um, it's all about, for me, having a little fun with the painting. So I'm going to stop at that. Let's have a look. I'm going to move back to my thicker brush and give that a clean. I'm then going to start putting in some darker blues. So let's take some phthalo blue. I'll take a touch of magenta and then a touch of burnt umber. But I do have a lot more blue in this. It's an, just a, basically a dark blue with a hint of a burnt umber in, in the paint. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of continue these on and go into the blue, okay? And I'm very softly kind of just dragging the paint off of the brush. I'm softening the paint in as I go. So I'm just going up at a slight angle look, giving it little flicks, and it disappears off up into that color. I do the same, uh, let's put another one here. And it doesn't have to be a solid line either. Um, they can break up a little bit like that here and there. And as they come over, then they start lightening slightly, don't they? It comes over to a brighter color. So let's take some phthalo blue with, some blue with some white. And we start lightening this now as it comes over, okay? I'm also going to take a hint of Naples yellow. It goes into a bright, whitey, bluey kind of a green as it comes over here. So I'm just going to soften that color into some of them. So I think you're kind of beginning to get the idea of how I work um, and how I try to simplify this. Now I want to just start darkening this. I'm going to take some phthalo blue with some burnt umber and a touch of black. But there is a lot more blue in this. It's a very dark blue. And I'm going to just start putting that in here. And I'm going to just soften it upwards. And I'm adjusting the color as I go. So I just took another little touch of blue into that. And I'm going to soften this across into those ripples and into the rest of that blue as well. I just want a nice sort of a dark corner over here. And then I'm softening it across here like this. Soften it all together, nice and gentle. And bring it across 
into this lighter area nice and gently soften it all together and there we go and I might even go darker I'm going to take some black and some phthalo blue and I'm going to go nice and dark down in this corner here softening it across into some of those ripples so what we have is this nice dark corner coming into view and you can use your little soft blender brush for all of this if you want it's completely up to yourself so there how's that so far that's not too bad is it and it's real it's, it's a lot of fun doing this kind of work i'm going to just now Go across some of these and soften some of those in with my soft brush ever so gently just softening the edges making it nice and soft so it looks a bit more like soft water all right now that will do okay the next step now is where we put some light blues across some of the tops of these that will give you the impression of the light hitting the ripples as it's coming towards you so let's again go back to this soft medium brush i'm calling it a medium sized flat brush um because that's what i would say this is a medium flat it's not a large flat it's not a small flat it's a medium kind of somewhere in the middle i'm sure you have lots of these sizes anyway so nice clean brush and i'm going to go into some phthalo blue again and then pick up lots of white and i'm going to pick up a touch of naples yellow the Naples yellow will give the blue that kind of glow that we're looking for. That bright kind of soft glow. So here we go. A nice sort of a bluey hint of a green in this blue. Very soft colour. And I'm then going to just cut across some of the ripples in this with that colour. So I'm just kind of hitting some of the tops of the ripples and softening it across. So then what you end up with, you see, is you have a light side, which is the top of the ripple, and the dark side, which is the back of the ripple. It gives you that sort of effect, I find. So let me just do that again for you, down on this one. I'm not going too bright with the colour just yet. I'm very gently softening this across some of those ripples. So now you can kind of begin to see what I was aiming to achieve. So this kind of effect, you see what I mean? So I'm going to take a bit of rich blue, pop a little bit of rich blue across some of them. And I'll sit back and take a look. So now you can see the effect of those ripples. So just remember, a ripple on a river has a light side and a dark side. If you just pop a couple of darks in and then a couple of lights on top, soften them together, you're 90% there, okay? Just try to remember that. Um, keep it simple. Don't overthink water. A lot of people, I find, overthink water when they're painting water too much. Um, and a lot of people struggle to get the water. Well, they don't struggle. They, they struggle to try and make the water look as realistic as possible. And for me, that's just not fun, really. I'll be quite honest. It's just my opinion. Um, I wouldn't have any enjoyment out of trying to make a scene or a river look exactly like the photograph. I really don't understand what drives people to do that. Um, it's a painting. It's supposed to be moving and it's supposed to be rough. You're supposed to see some brush strokes. And as I keep saying to people, and you may not agree with this, it may cause some controversy, I suppose, among artists, but if you want something to look like a photograph, just go and take a photograph and get it printed and hang it on your wall. Um, I know it's a great sense of achievement when you can paint something to look like a photograph. Um, and yeah, it's, it's fantastic. Some of the work is absolutely brilliant. But for me, I like the freedom of making a painting just looked like a painting that somebody has actually put a brush on a canvas 
it's just my opinion you can tell me to be quiet and stop yapping on if you like that's just the way i feel okay back to this enough of me chatting i'm going to soften all of this briefly together just very gently for a moment and i'm going to go back in then with my detail brush and just add a few details into this so for instance let me just take some of that dark color again and i'm going to just redefine some of these some of those darks just there just a little bit of paint on my brush I just want to bring some of them back out. Just one or two. And then I'm going to clean that brush again. And I'm going to, going to go into some very bright colour. A very bright, whitey blue. Lots of white. And I'm just going to go along in between some of those darks and just add a little hint of white over the tops of some of them just along the top edge adding a little touch of that nice bright color here and there and i suppose it kind of acts as a little bit of a shimmer um or it'll just kind of catch your eye i suppose a little bit it'll bring them out that little bit more What do we think? And I'm also going to go a little bit up into this tree line, up in this reflection. Just going to bring a few of them across up here, just to break that up a little bit more. Putting a couple of little, just, I'm basically scraping my brush just along here and there. That's all I'm doing. Just to break up the reflection a little. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my palette knife, if I can find it. It's here somewhere. Hmm, there it is. I'm going to grab, oh no, that's the wrong, wrong palette knife. Where's my palette knife? This nice flat edged palette knife. And I'm going to just take some light whitey kind of a blue. And I'm going to go up here and just cut across this line ever so gently with that little bit of whitey kind of a blue that just gives a nice little bit of a shimmer I think and just over on this side a little bit of white on its own and I'm going to pull that down just there a little bit where the sun is kind of hitting that spot just there and then soften that down very gently and i'll soften it up I really just want to create a sense of light over in this corner. That's all I'm trying to do, really. And it's often across some of these as well. We do want them soft. Um, I don't want very sharp lines in this reflection. I just want it nice and soft, if you know what I mean. Now, I'm going to stop at that, and I'm going to just take a quick look. And that's not bad. It's actually not bad, my friends. I'm going to move over and do this reflection over here. So let's clean our middle size brush again and let's mix up some dark autumn colour. Let's get some, tit uh, not titanium white, some cadmium yellow into a little bit of cadmium red and a touch of burnt cyanide. Um, it's basically, whatever colour you see here, just make a darker mix of that colour. I'm going to try this kind of dark orangey colour, maybe a hint of burnt umber into that. Just mix a dark colour, similar to what you have, and just drag it down. Let's just, just go for it and have a bit of fun. A little bit more 
number. Drag the colors down. Now I'll just give that a wipe and go to some cadmium yellow. Pull some cadmium yellow through there as well. Now, I'll clean my brush again and go into some burnt umber and perhaps a touch of black. Small bit of a dark colour just up around the top. Drag that down. And what I'll do then next is let me just take another little bit of black. I just want to go nice and dark up around here. Because remember, the reflections will always be slightly darker than what you're reflecting, if you understand what I mean. Because of the depth of the water and all of that, um, the colours you're reflecting will be darker in the reflection. That's always the way. So you always make your colours slightly darker in the reflection of what you're, of what you're painting. If it's a tree or a house or whatever, just make it a, a bit of a shade darker. Now I'm going to take this soft brush and pull this down firstly, just into that. And I'm going to pull across it gently. And the next thing I'm going to do now is start putting some reflection of these merging together. So I'm going to take this a nice orange color. And let me even take a hint of burnt umber in that as well. So a nice dark browny colour. What I'm going to do is start putting in, you see, suggestion of some of that colour going in, into the blue. Just hints of it here and there, you see what I mean? Little small suggestion of the colour sort of mixing together. Little ripples mixing together. Does that look okay? Let me sit back and take a look. It's not bad, sure it's not. It's okay. I'll get away with that. I'm not too fussy with painting, I'll be very honest. I'm not fussy at painting. I like to just have a bit of fun with my brush. That's what, that's what it's all about for me. I'm putting a slightly brighter colour with a hint of yellow just through some of them. Just to capture some of the light, I suppose, if anything else. And then I'm going to do the very same with the blue. All right, so then I'm going to mix a light blue, get a small round brush, mix a nice rich bluey color, and I'm going to put some of that bluey color in between some of those. Um, it's really just to refine some of them. You see what I mean? I'm just sort of refining those shapes, bringing some blue into the mix as well. Also, it would be much easier if I left this dry to get these nice fine lines. But if you're like me, sometimes I just won't have the patience to wait for something to dry in between. So I like to just put it on and get on with it and have a bit of fun with my painting. I'm just not a very patient artist. Um, I hold my hands up. I'm guilty of that. I'm not a very patient person. Maybe that's my my downfall, as they say. Maybe that's my, my downfall when it comes to painting, but I don't know, I just like to carry on. I, I, I find it very difficult to put my brush down halfway through a painting. 
I really do. Unless it's a big, big painting, of course, then yes, I will take a break. But when I'm enjoying something like this, I find it very difficult to put my brush down and walk away and just to leave it because I'm having so much fun when I'm doing it. Um, I just tend to keep going. So let me know if you think that's a good thing or a bad thing. I know it's a good thing to leave your layers dry as well from time to time, but uh, I'd like to see what you think. Okay. Now, I'll finally just give that a very gentle soften together. And I think lastly, before I move on, I'm just going to put a tiny hint of a blue just across where that meets the bank up there. It's just for a little bit of a sheen on the water more than anything else. That will do. It's just a little bit, just to break it up. So, how's that looking? Not bad, I think. I'm going to move on to the left-hand side. Let's do all this area. This shouldn't be that difficult, really. I don't think it should. Um, I need to get some burnt umber for my palette. This, of course, is all live. I don't do time lapses. I'm not a fan of time lapses. So what you see is what you get. It's all live. In the moment, no editing. So I feel like you're sitting next to me and I'm just, we're having a chat and we're talking and we're painting. That's what I feel at the moment. Let's take some dark color. I'm gonna simply put some dark reflections in here. I'm gonna grab some burnt umber some cadmium red and a touch of burnt sienna. I'm going to just pull some dark down here. Just red, red nice reddy colour. Bear in mind, most of this is going to be covered with leaves and all that kind of thing. So I'm not too particular about all of this, all of this side. Now, I added a bit of yellow into that only because just where we had that little bit of water coming out there, a little bit of a yellow reflection, and then it softens away. Let's go up here. Most of this will be covered. So you can see I'm not, I'm not too particularly worried about this. I'll take some black and some burnt umber, put a suggestion of reflection in there. Um, just get nice and dark up there where they meet. Nice and dark. Soften it together. A little bit of dark colour on your brush. So that way, there's no where the two meet. Does that make sense? They, just, they, they, they almost look, disappear into each other. Now, that'll do fine. We don't need to go overboard with all of this side over here. The only thing I will do is I will take my medium flat brush again and I'm going to go back into some blue. I'm going to take some light blue and I'm going to come over. In fact, let's make it nice and whitey. I'm going to come over here and just soften in some of those. So I'm cutting into some of these now with some bluey sort of reflections, if you understand what I mean. Bluey little ripples. Um, down here, put a few down there like that. This will then show later on, once I put all my leaves on and cover a lot of this, you will see little hints of that, you see, popping through. Just little tiny hints of it here and there. We'll soften them back out. Okay, now one thing I'm going to do is take some white and some Naples yellow. Because as you're looking around, you kind of you spot little things that you want to change. I'm adding a little bit of Naples yellow with white just up around here, look. 
I want to create some sunlight bursting through just around there. Very bright sunlight. That will do fine. And the next thing I'm going to do is probably just start putting some of those leaves on the water. Um, there's Look, there's lots of different ways you could do things like that. You could just use a small pointy brush like this. Not very pointy, but you could just grab a lot of paint with a pointy brush and just pop dabs of colour on your canvas. Um, just to give the suggestion of leaves hitting the water, all that kind of stuff. Just like that, look. It's simply little dabs, really, of the brush. Because when you look at the painting then afterwards, your mind will fill in the blanks and your brain will kind of just say, well, yeah, they're little leaves and so on. So I'm not going to try and paint actual bits of leaves it's going to be impossible it really is it's impossible if you if you're going to try and paint actual leaves in the distance you will find it's just impossible when they're closer up like this then yes maybe you could go to town and make them make them look like actual leaves so here, for example, I will go, um, let's just put nice pinky ready one just here, like that, you see? And I will leave the reflections for a while. There's no rush with the reflections. We'll do all those later. And little bits of you know, dead leaves here and there going across the water. And it's just a case of doing this all the way across. And I will probably just switch to my palette knife in a moment. Because this, I, I could be here for two hours trying to paint individual little leaves like this. I could be here forever trying to do this and I just don't have the patience for that I like to be spontaneous I'm going to take some nap Naples yellow and some titanium white I'm just going to pop little highlights on some of these you see the way like some of them did sort of they tend to sort of catch the light in some places And then I'll also add a little hint of darkness to them as well. So just to be, um, you know, just to have a little bit of dark on them as well, I think is a good thing. A little bit of shadow here and there. And once they do that, then I'm simply going to put in a suggestion of a reflection. So I'm simply taking some black and all I'm doing now is just looking at the photograph. Okay. I'm just looking at the photograph and I can see little hints of a very dark reflection here and there. Like that, okay? You can take your time with all of this if you want. But I like to be nice and loose. I like to have a very loose um, style when I'm painting. It's just the way I like to paint. There's no particular reason for it. It's just the way I like to paint. And I'll soften them out here and there, look, just to give the impression of them sort of merging into the water slightly, following the ripples.
So look, this is the way I'm painting it in principle. After this, it's a case of um, just grabbing your, your knife, grabbing your palette knife, and going to town. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab a palette knife and just go crazy. Let's go. Are we ready for this? It could go absolutely wrong. It could go great. I don't know. Let's just go. Boom, boom, boom. Pop a lot. Load of paint. Bits of chunks of paint on this. Here, there, and everywhere. Grab loads of colour. Bits of red, bits of yellow. All of that. And let's just pop it on. Very, very randomly. All right? Very randomly. Come on. We'll do the, the final kind of details once we've finished this. We'll put in little highlights and stuff like that once we're finished. All right? Don't worry. It's not going to be the finished article just left like this. I'll put in nice little highlights and all that kind of stuff. And we'll paint one or two actual leaves as well. But right now, it's just about having some fun. Covering the canvas. That's what I'm concentrating on right now. Covering all this area just with the impression of lots of bits of foliage, bits of leaves falling down everywhere. You take some brown, take some red, grab some of that colour. Pop it in here and there, just be very random with your palette knife, creating lots of texture, lots of interest. Dab, 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 dab. That's the idea. You can come down and look, just go into the ripple slightly, suggesting bits of pieces. Um, it doesn't have to be leaves, it could be little bits of pieces of things sticking up, upwards as well. And at the end of the day, as I said, it's just about making the scene look busy, like there's a lot going on, like there's lots of foliage in the water. And, you know, your, your brain will fill in all the blanks. So I'm going to stop now at that just for a moment. We just fix one or two bits there, just around here. Look, pop one or two pieces in. Let me just stop for a moment and take a quick look. Well, how does that look? Now that's a nice rough looking water there, isn't it? So the next thing I'm going to do is take a lighter colour. I'm going to go with some cadmium red, magenta and some Naples yellow. I want to mix a nice light kind of a pinky colour. And then I'm going to create um, actual little leaves on the water. I'm just going to try and create the impression of a few bright, bright spots on some of those leaves. You can use a brush for this if you like, but uh, it might be more difficult painting on this thick paint. But yes, I have to say, it's so much fun painting like this with just a palette knife and having some fun. It's so refreshing. It really is. You should try it. Just letting some light spots hit the painting here and there. It's all just about an impression for me. I'm not, again, I, I know I keep saying this, I'm not trying to paint actual leaves. It's a more of an impressionistic feeling I'm after. But if you like painting something realistic, you can just sit there for four hours 
if you like, and just paint some nice leaves on the water. It's completely up to yourself. Okay, that's enough of the pink. I'm now going to just pick up some yellow and try and create some warmth here and there with some nice yellow. I'll grab more yellow for my palette. I will sort out some of those as well, just soften some of them together. Um, but look, you can just grab a palette knife and go and add a little bit of color to some of them. Just like that, okay? But I must say, it's really so refreshing painting like this. Um, try it. Please do just try it. Try not to be focused on painting individual little leaves and bits of grass and all that kind of thing because you can get very bogged down i find when trying to copy something exactly now to be honest i haven't even looked at the reference photograph in the last five minutes i'm just making this my own um and that's i find that's the best way to paint make it your own add your own little twist onto it don't be shy And you know what? We're nearly there, aren't we? You could even stop at that and say, finished, done. You absolutely could. But I'll just maybe add a little hint of light onto some of these. Just where the light area is hitting. I know this may only be a tiny bit now and you may not even notice a lot of this. But when you're finished, you will. You will just notice these little patches of light catching there. And finally, I think I'm just going to finish it right now and say thank you for watching. Um, but finally, I'm going to just take some white and I'm going to dab some white along up here to create that nice glisten on the water around there. And even just along there a little. And my friends, I'm finished. I'm going to leave it at that. I might just add, do you know what I will do actually, as I'm still here? I'm going to grab a lot of cadmium red. I just want to add one or two big bits of cadmium red just around here and there. Let me get some cadmium red. This big splash of cadmium red now is really going to catch our eyes, isn't it? Let's get some cadmium red and just put in a couple of really nice chunks as if they're very red leaves glistening in the sunshine. And again, they don't need to look like actual leaves, but just rich blobs of color. I think that's all you need. And some burnt sienna. And I'm gonna call this one, my friends, finished. I think it looks just fine. There we go. I will say thank you so much for joining me. And I'm going to sign my painting. I come down here to the right hand side with a little bright color. And I'm going to sign this. And I hope you've enjoyed it. I really do. Um, I try to keep it simple for you. That's just the way I paint. I like to simplify things. 
but look that's it that's pretty much finished so thank you so much i'm probably a bit close now i know i apologize let me move my stand just back a little and move it up a small touch thank you so much for joining me um please do subscribe uh you're missing lovely paintings every week every week i get a, a painting uploaded and we try to do something different on a weekly basis i have another two of these canvases left this size so i'm going to do a nice um maybe a nice seascape next week or something again with autumn themed so until then thank you so so much for watching i hope you've learned something about keeping things simple and just leave a comment in the comment section below you can um, support me by joining Patreon as well. The link is in the description. Lots of extra tutorials on Patreon for you to try as well. So anyway, thank you so much for joining me. It's been wonderful having you here um, in my studio. I'll see you very soon. Take care and God bless. Happy painting.